Uh, just to, to think that this team had lost its first eight games and had two guys in the rotation <laughs> quit uh, in the middle of the year um, to have its uh, leading uh, scorer and rebounder, second leading scorer and first leading rebounder never play a minute. Um, to go through that, it uh, one, it's uh, God's grace, God's strength, just to hold it together. And the uh, character of these guys is uh, phenomenal. And without that, on a daily basis, 86 practices, um, 35 games in, is uh, remarkable and uh, just a tribute to what God has done in uh, our hearts, in us, in us and through us, to get us to this point. We'll open it up for questions first for the student athletes. John, is this the biggest line you guys have chased down so far? Definitely. You know, uh, as Coach says, starting out 0-8 and, and just to finish like this, uh, win five in a row, especially at this time of the year, it's uh, every student athlete's dream to be able to play in the NCAA tournament. 17 for 24 for three-point shooting this week. Could you have picked Why'd you miss seven, man? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? Could you have picked a better time to get hot and just become that offensive threat that Liberty needed? Um, it's just a great time, you know. I started getting in the rhythm. I was blessed to be able to get in the rhythm at this time for us. Six for seven for three-point shooting tonight. How big were those threes, especially in the second half? CSU was keeping it close, and you guys built it to a 14-point lead and really took control of the game. Um, Coach, he just called my number when he felt like I had the high hand and I was able to have an advantage. He called some plays for me, and I was just able to knock him down. John, you think he was a worthy tournament MVP? <laughs> Definitely. Anyone that shoots 17 for 24 from the three, it's no question. And it's it just makes the offense so easy. You can penetrate in and kick out and – his man's face guarding him so you can get to the bucket. If he's not, then he's a 75% three-point shooter. You, no, nothing beats that. For uh, John and, and Devon, was there a time this week, was it after the Radford game maybe, where you guys started to feel that this was possible? Did it come a couple games into this tournament? I mean, uh, after, we, after we got Coastal, uh, you know, it was – if you can beat Coastal by 20 on their home four, I, I think we knew we could beat anyone in this tournament. Not saying that we knew we were going to win it. Uh, we had to take it game by game, day by day, just doing what we need to do. But, you know, I think it was always in the back of our minds that we really have a shot at winning this thing. Yes. I know I'm building on what um, Cave said. You know, Coach, he always instilled in us that we, we had the talent to win it. He told us every day that he believed in us that we could win it. And mm -hmm. we just finally, finally bought in and were able to get the win today. Coach said this early January after the Western Carolina win that, you know, back in December you were guys were in, you know, training mode, mm -hmm. January, December mode. When did this team really start getting to the point where you guys were playing at your best and you had caught up with the rest of the team? I would say right now, Co uh, the Coastal game. I mean, that was – we've played debatably four of our best games of the year, these four games in the tournament. So – Talk about peaking at the exact right time. We played well at Radford the last game, of the, the last conference game of the year. But these, I guess, for the last five games, I would say maybe our best five games of the year. Um, I, and I just felt like the the downs in the season early was just prepping us for this time. You know, going mm -hmm. through all that in the beginning of the season just helped us to get where we are today. Devon, twenty three three pointers in the last five games. You know, one off the single season record for most threes at Liberty. Um, does that mean anything for you, or is that still got to keep shooting because you guys have uh, another task at hand coming up in the NCAA tournament? Um, I really wasn't thinking about the record. I was just trying to come out here and win this weekend, so hopefully I can break it. <laughs> and win a game in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, that would be nice too. John, what do you think about your potential NCAA matchup? I mean, do you even care who's on the other side of that, that bracket at this point? I mean, I want to go out there and give it my best and see if we can pull out a win. But I feel like if we do us, we can give teams a game. I just want to go out there and concentrate on what we can do best. And, you know, it's in God's hands what happens after that. Have you talked to Jesse at all during this week? 
yeah, I actually talked to him yesterday. I'm probably gonna he's probably gonna call me after this game, and uh, he might be a, a little. I mean, he's gonna be very happy for me, but he's uh, probably a little down that he's not. Right yeah, now. yeah, I got a little bragging rights now. <laughs> yeah, he, he's gonna be very happy for us as a team and for Liberty. I, you know, I, he just probably wishes he was a part of this team right now. Did he say anything to you to, for motivation for this game? You know, definitely just go in there. He he's uh, you know he's overseas. He said go out, play fun, play, uh, have fun, play hard. You know, don't. Stress yourself out. Just go out there. He's a, you're a good player. Y'all have a good team. Just do y'all's thing, and y'all should be fine. And what was the difference? You and I talked before the tournament how you know Devon had filled up Jesse's role at mm-hmm. Guardian. Is Devon now fully exceeded those expectations now that you guys are in the NCAA tournament? Uh, definitely, you can't uh, you can't argue that now that we've gone four games or three games farther than we went last year. They're different players, but he offers a much uh, different look to, for defenses, it's impossible to guard a, a shooter like that. So yeah, I would definitely. You guys had you know, Joel and JR battling foul trouble this game. Mm-hmm. You guys still win the rebound battle by by seven against one of the top rebounding teams in the nation. How key was that? I know you finished with seven, Trap finishes with nine, just to, as as a team, rebound and get an opportunity to you know limit them to one and done and only seven on that's been a focus ever since uh, the VMI loss, uh, six, I guess six games ago. Um, we got out rebounded by them. And since then, we've either tied or won every rebound battle. Uh, and it's, you know, JR and Joel draw so much attention. People are always trying to fl- front block them. Our guards are able, to, uh, able to get in and get rebounds. Trap having nine rebounds, I think that's his career high. And, you know, he's a great athlete, and that helps us so much that uh, myself and him and Devon can get in there and get some rebounds, and it's uh, won the games for us. We'll open it up for questions for Coach Lair. <coughs> Coach, how's this? Uh, first question I ask Gabe, how is this line big? How big is this line that you guys chased down and caught today? We've been chasing Lions uh, all year, and um, – it's just humbling uh, because you just show up and you just try to grind out another day in the face of adversity. And we've we've had a lot of days like that, boy. I I can't tell you how many days. You, unless you've been on a team in the nitty gritty and seen them lose eight straight, a lot of people quit after that. Now, a lot of men quit. A lot of grown ups quit. Not these two. Not them guys in that locker room. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of them. Men show up and they go, okay, you know, that's my job. I'm getting paid. It's hard on these guys. And I can just see what God has done in their hearts through this year and what's happened. And uh, they'll never forget this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think they'll never be the same because of it. What was your reaction after the, when the final buzzer sounded? How, how much joy through a season of ups and downs did you feel? I, 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 I get way more satisfaction seeing these guys answer questions and seeing them cut down the nets than anything that I can uh, personally take credit for. It's just, um, it's life changing. It's, uh, I'm just looking at their faces and just trying to soak in every <laughs> moment of what he looks like and what he says because uh, that's what you do it for. And it ain't about me, it, 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 it's about these kids and what they've done and how they can experience something like this. It's, it's unbelievable. Speaking to the game, only eight turnovers. How big was that to, after only games against High Point and Gardner-Webb, turnovers in the second half allowed them to get back into the game and you guys, three turnovers in the second half. And how pleased were you with the ball protection and, ability to hold on to the lead and finish this game the way you, know, you guys wanted to. And we had a couple turnovers there late, um, traps and uh, uh, Tomases. But uh, uh, when you make free throws, it gives you a chance. Um, and we stepped up to the line and uh, knocked them down. Um, you know, what John Caleb said about rebounding is you can't give this team extra possessions. If you turn it over and give them extra possessions, if you give them offensive rebounds and give them extra possessions, they're too good. They're too well coached. They've got too many weapons. And uh, 
cut down on our turnovers and cut down on their offensive rebounds was enabled us to uh, limit them uh, from getting extra possessions, which would have really killed us. Coach, in this room, there's a lot of familiarity with the Liberty story, particularly this week. So those around the country who are about to meet you and meet this group for the first time, what do you want them to know about the Liberty story and about these players? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I just think that uh, Liberty is a special place. It's not certainly not a perfect place, but it is a special place. It's a unique place. It's a place that uh, it's been really good for me as a human being and my kids as human beings and these players as human beings. And um, I think that uh, the thumbprint of God on this team and on our university is there's no way to explain it other than that. To think that we had no buildings 41 years ago <laughs> is incredible. To think that this team did what it did after being in the depths of college basketball, nearly the last uh, team in the RPI, <laughs> Um, and now we're wearing hats. Yeah, you can't explain that any other way. It's a great question. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Devin, you know, I was going to say, you've experienced going to the NCAA tournament before, I guess it's like 10 years ago, Colorado State. 2003, yep. yeah. Uh, is this, it sounds like this is a much different experience. I mean, can you compare the two? Every um, experience is unbelievably precious and unique. Um, I don't, I don't, when you ask that question, it's a great question. I don't think of experiences. I think of the people and I think of the people that you share it with. I think of my wife who goes through a bunch of BS as a coach's wife. Um, and I think of the, these kids in the locker room and what they go through, what God puts them through, how they respond, how they grow. Man, it's that's what I think about. And it, it has nothing to do with a trophy and cutting down nets. That's their experiences. That's a trophy case deal. My heart is filled with the looks and the expressions and the words and the emotions that I see these guys have. That's, that's why you coach. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing I asked, I asked your guys. Did you feel there was any moment when, I don't know, you could sense this coming this week and maybe you just got out of the way because they had it rolling the way, uh, the way you wanted them to? Um, I sensed that about a month ago that we were trending in the right direction. I told uh, <coughs> Jeff Barber, who supports us in unbelievable ways, that He's not able to be here, and it's, it's a shame because he, he deserves to be here. Um, that I told him that we were a month away in January, and then we were two weeks behind everybody in February, and I could sense us closing the gap. And whether that means you're going to win it or not, I don't think that does, but it gives you hope and it gives you a chance to win it, and that's what – and you don't get there without these guys showing up every day after a tough loss or uh, with, with – uh, they've had juice, they've had energy, they've had passion, they've had uh, work ethic. And, again, I've been around a lot of teams. I'm an old guy. I've been around for college basketball teams since uh, 1976. <laughs> <laughs> and I know how teams do it. And I know that there are teams who don't finish strong. And you, you lose eight straight and they cash it in. Uh, these guys have given them a chance to be here today. And that's, that's, that's the story. That's the story. It's their work over the unseen days. Everybody sees, wow, look at the nets and look at the trophy. And they got the hat on backwards. And wow. They don't see the days that nobody's around when people at Liberty are going, man, you, you guys suck. <laughs> you guys have lost eight straight. There weren't many on that bandwagon then. And there ain't nobody clapping for them to show up and work hard 
every day during an eight-game winning, a losing streak. And that's what, that's what I'm the most proud of. I mean, it's, uh, you know, when they can do that, that's, I'll bet on these two guys, them guys in the locker room for the rest of their lives. One last sir. I mean, it is a distinction. It is going to be a distinction. You guys, I guess, are the second team to, with 20 losses to ever make an NCAA tournament. I mean, that, it, seems inc- I mean, it seems like an incredible. That's game. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We got the hats, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.